My name is Hagai Netzer. I'm from Tel Aviv University in Israel, and I work in astronomy. I have been working in astronomy for many, many years. My specialty really in astronomy is black holes. Astrophysics, if you compare it to other sciences, is doing very, very well. And there are several ways to measure it. And one way, which is in fact the easiest, is to look at the amount of money the public and, the, and governments are willing to spend. We all have to remember that if we don't, give, have, we don't have the means to investigate and our science is very, very expensive, we cannot do it. So there is a very good indication of what is important and what is not important in the public eye. And it's very, in fact, interesting to know that what is important to us, we are, you know, we are professionals, we are doing it all our life. And what is important to the public and to government is very similar, in fact, and I find it a bit surprising. We don't know what will happen, what will become practical of what we're doing now. But if we look back in time, we know what was practical. Breast cancer is being done by CT, which is X-ray imaging. And the first methods to really uh, improve X-ray images were taken from astronomy. Uh, you go uh, backward in time, uh, the future uh, main source of energy for humanity is going to be nuclear reactions and fusion reaction that are very similar to what is happening inside stars, in the cores of stars. And there is a huge project now that being done by many nations in Europe. The center is in France, which is exactly trying to reproduce energy by the same processes. And this started because some people, this was done 100 years ago, decided to understand for no reason at all why stars produce energy. Perhaps one other very general example is that you develop a spacecraft, for example, JWST, the biggest telescopes there is, or the most expensive, and on the way you discover things that are going to become useful. What to do in space, how to send communication satellites for space, how to uh, make them efficient and last longer, and that all started from astronomy because people wanted to put telescopes on satellite and do other things with them. So there is a technology that you don't know uh, uh, is there when you start a project, and at the end you realize that you can, you can do it and you can do other things with it. And there are many, many other examples. You can go to NASA. NASA, has, in fact, is producing every year or two a list of inventions that came out of NASA uh, projects. And they're very good at it. They have to justify the money that the, the American taxpayer is uh, doing it. So you can look at the list. Some of them are quite amazing. Yeah. Two uh, reasons that I could think about. One is really the simplest reason of all, and this is that it interests people. The other thing which is what makes life easier, and this is applied science if you want. So, and our experience, when I say our, I mean scientists, is that what we have to investigate are the places, are the point, are the topics that we know as least about, we know very little about. When we know a lot about something, this is the time, this is an indication to try and go in a different direction. And astronomy has been going, was in fact, uh, very, very useful in, in going into unknown direction and find some answers. In astrophysics, I think there are two or three uh, areas that it's very clear are going to be investigated and money spent on in the future, in the near future. This does not mean that the areas that I'm going to mention are the most important. In fact, it's very difficult to say what is important and what is less important. But definitely the way things are going to, it, one area is to investigate life in other places. I call it life in the universe or life in our galaxy, but life in other points. The other point which is related to it is to investigate a bit more our solar system, and that has some very important applications. And the third one are things that are very, very far away from where we are. I'm investigating black holes, 
And this is really done in a very, very far away places, in other galaxies, sometimes at the edge of the universe. Uh, this is definitely another area. And another big area that I want to mention is uh, investigation, general investigation of the history of the universe. We call it the Big Bang, how the universe started. It's definitely another direction which is going to be important in, in the coming future, in the coming years. May, may I say something a bit more general? And this is that astronomy keeps changing all the time. And it keeps changing in a sense that what we used to call astronomy 20 years ago is not exactly the astronomy of today. And 20 years from now, it will be a different astronomy. And one indication is the, if you look at the names of areas, of subjects, of topics that are being studied and being taught in universities. For example, now there is a big area called astrobiology. It's a combination of biology and astronomy. And you need this combination to understand. So when, what we call astronomy is really not what Copernicus or Galileo or Newton or Herschel call astronomy. And it's not going to be the same astronomy 20 years from now. But there are several general directions, but it may change. It may change tomorrow. I don't really know.